In case you've been living under a rock, that guy is former Smash Pro massive streamer, international heartthrob Ludwig. And uh, what's he doing here? A little research on stream? A little light reading to pass the time? Nope. This is a speed run. You might be tempted to ask, how do you speed run an encyclopedia? Well, it's a race. The general concept is to get from one random Wikipedia article to another one as fast as possible while also using as few clicks as possible. And despite how phenomenally boring this concept may sound, it actually can be pretty intense and makes for some really funny moments. Ow! Ow! Oh my god, I'm a cheat! Oh wait, no, this is smart doorbell. Here's Getting another fun facts. fact, he was 5'6", so he would tower over you in conversation. Okay, well. And there's actually entire communities online dedicated to speedrunning Wikipedia. And as dry as any given page can look, the strategies that have come out of this racing community can tell us a lot about how we organize our world and even what we value in it. So in this video, I'll show you the inner workings of Wikipedia and teach you how to exploit them. Then we'll try to describe the theoretically perfect speedrun. And I'll teach you how to fly a plane. But that comes last. Let's get started. To understand a successful run, we need some basic intuition about Wikipedia. Ironically enough, there's a lot of Wikipedia articles about how Wikipedia is connected. Here are the rules. Start at any random Wikipedia page and click the first link to another page in that article's text. Then from the next page, click the first link in that article's text and repeat this process for every page, so on and so on. As you do this, something weird will start to happen. Going through this process will lead you back to the philosophy page around 94 to 97% of the time. Or, to put it another way, of all the 6.6 .6 million pages on Wikipedia, 6.3 million of them will end up back at philosophy. And this isn't by accident either. It reflects a fundamental design feature of Wikipedia. In the Wikipedia Manual of Styles, we find this rule. This style rule of providing context has the effect of ensuring that nearly every first link on a Wikipedia page will lead to some more general topic, and eventually the study of that topic. Given that philosophy philosophy is the study of ideas, it's natural that eventually every study or field will eventually fall back on some philosophical principle, which will then, in turn, link to philosophy. From this, we get the so-called philosophy funnel, which gives us an exhaustive method of getting almost anywhere on the site without going into a search engine. Of course, the major problem with relying on the philosophy funnel for speedrunning is that it is wildly inefficient. From the graphs on the screen, you can see that some of these connections are dozens of pages long. And there's for sure some shorter path between our two topics than going all the way to philosophy and then all the way back. But before we can start taking these shorter paths, we need a way of grading our runs. Given that, by the nature of the game, every Wikipedia run is a one-shot, our grading scale needs to apply regardless of what Wikipedia articles we're given, and hopefully give us a shorthand to tell whether we're starting to spiral off into an infinite page loop. Because see, on Wikipedia there are no dead ends, but there are infinite loops. And getting around this problem is where our next theory comes in. If we are going to be able to grade the quality of our roots, we need to establish some baselines. To do this, we can think of Wikipedia as a network, or a series of interconnected nodes, where every page is a physical location and every link is a walkway to another place. And what we want to know is, on average, how many different pathways it takes to connect any two random pages. The obvious first way of finding this is just to send a web crawler off onto Wikipedia to collect all the pages and their links, run it through a network program, and then count the average path length. And I know how to do that. I've done something similar in another video. But Wikipedia is a whole different beast. Like I mentioned earlier, Wikipedia has 6.6 .6 million articles, and based on the stats page, it's gaining around 500 pages a day. All the meanwhile, in the background, we have no idea how many pages are being deleted. Beyond that, the articles themselves are constantly being edited, links being added, removed, changed. It's impossible to measure a thing that is never really sitting still. And beyond the measurement problem, I don't even know how to put the scale of this network into perspective for you. So I asked ChatGPT, and well, we'll just have to take its word that the number of links between articles is somewhere between billions and trillions. So in situations like these, where we can't brute force our way to an answer, we have to fall back on theory. And it's convenient for us that there's an entire branch of research dedicated to problems like this. Network science. In this field, experiments have been done on everything from telephone networks to social media sites, and 
For our purposes, we're just going to look at the ones conducted on websites. I promise, I promise, it won't get too mathy. We're just going to go over a few key results, and for all the nerds, the studies that we go over will be linked in the description. But for the rest of us, here are the key results. In 98, Watson Strogatz used a theoretical model to measure the average path of a population the size of the United States, and found the average path length to be 5.7. As they increased the population to everyone on Earth, their model predicted a path length of around 6.6. .6. So the average of the two is around 6. But at this point, we need to take a quick aside and explain something. Because see, in a network, you can only take whole steps. There's no such thing as a path length of 5.5. You can't go halfway to another node. So whenever I say these numbers and you see a number like 5.7, the way you should interpret this is that nearly the entire network is connected by five steps. Or in other words, almost everybody can connect to each other through five people. But that 0.7 tells us that there's a significant amount of the network that requires more than five. We don't know if that means that most of them have six connections or maybe there's just a small group of them who have 50 connections. We don't know what that looks like. But what we do know is that most of the network is about five. Continuing on. In 2001, Duncan Watts used the email networks of 48,000 people and ended up finding an average path length of about six. In 2007, Leskovec and Horovitz used 30 billion conversations on Microsoft Messenger and they found an average of about six. You'll notice all of these studies have a strange commonality. They all seem to suggest that the average path length across all these different websites is right around six connections. And this phenomena is so well known that it's even got a name. You might have heard of it. The six degrees of separation rule. That is that in any given human network, whether just people or through coworkers or discord chats, every person on that network is separated by no more than six connections. It's such a well-documented hypothesis that it's got two Wikipedia articles about it. One about the theory itself and then one about the theory as applied to Wikipedia. And before all the nerds jump down my throat, I know this doesn't prove the six step theory, but it's just a theory. A wiki theory. <laughs> That's enough. We can use the six steps theory to grade our runs. If we go into the run assuming that anything under six steps is optimal, this gives us a sense of how efficient our route is. Obviously, shorter routes exist, and in this game, shorter is better. That's okay! But so long as we keep our step count below six, we're operating at a reasonable optimum. And the super interesting thing is that you even see this in Ludwig's runs. And mm. recently, I've noticed that it'll be like one person who gets it in 45 seconds, and the other two are somewhere in between Iran and Jordan, just confused out of their minds. Usually, if they don't complete the path within six steps, they start spiraling off into massive page counts, which is consistent with the infinite loops problem. Keeping this theory in mind should help us know if we're starting to get lost on our speedrun. So now we know a thing or two about the structure of Wikipedia and a bar for what we consider efficient. But there's one last concept that'll put you on the leaderboard. And to understand that, we need to understand planes. <laughs> There's a mantra among pilots that speed is life and altitude is insurance. In the context of flying a plane, it's pretty straightforward. If you're not going fast enough, your wings won't produce lift, which, if maintained for long enough, can have a uh, very negative effect on the health of a pilot. Similarly, altitude being insurance is the concept that the higher in the air a pilot is, the more screw-ups he can make before you know, slamming into the ground. In the context of Wikipedia, speed is the rate at which you can find information on the page. This just mostly comes from repetition and getting a grasp for the article layout. Altitude is best understood of how broad an article is. The key here is to go as high up the conceptual ladder as necessary, but no higher. If we want to go from Ludwig's page to say, Charlie's page, we don't want to climb all the way up to philosophy and then try to work our way back down. The best conceptual altitude for something like this would be something along the lines of streamer, or influencer, or YouTuber. Of course, we're also ignoring the fact that there's a direct link between their pages, but just ignore that for the example. Now compare that situation to if we wanted to get from Ludwig's page to say Ludwig von Beethoven. Then we'd probably try to find a link to a page about the name Ludwig. We want to minimize our conceptual altitude as even with incredible speed, going needlessly high up the concept ladder will ultimately ruin your times. The balancing act of these two principles, maximizing page speed and minimizing conceptual altitude, is what makes the difference between a godlike run and a random walk around Wikipedia. So to put a bow on this, we've explained the fundamental structure of Wikipedia and how we can exploit it, we've come up with a method of grading our runs despite their one-shot nature, and we adapted a mantra from pilots to optimize our runs. So now you are armed with more information about speedrunning Wikipedia than 
anyone has ever asked for. You can uh, you can bust this out at the next party you're at. It's a real crowd pleaser, I can tell you. If you want to take a swing at running, a few running sites are in the description. And if you do well, post your best scores over in the Discord. Maybe we'll come up with some sort of reward.